Today we're going to be working with a sand painting. Now a sand painting can be a powerful tool for change, for healing or to, even to illustrate your own personal spiritual journey. It's preferred or preferable to, to create it outdoors on the ground but despite its name sand is not a strict requirement. Now before beginning your, your painting collect the random items that call to you. Trust your, your inner self. Um, you'll be drawn to elements that are symbolic of the issues that you are addressing. Typically these may include you know, natural items such as stones or twigs or flowers and maybe some feathers that you find but you might also include a personal object that has special meaning to you. When collecting items in nature, especially any part of a living plant, ask permission and then thank the spirit of the plant. I said ideally they're made outside on the earth but if it's not possible use your imagination, find a space in your home or on your deck. You know, sometimes the, the underlining of the flower pot can be filled with soil or, or sand and it works just as well. So, you know, and then you use objects found in nature if you're going for a walk in the park or somewhere or the beach and bring items to the sand painting that have special meaning regarding what you're working on. Now, it's good to have some burnable items. And first of all, you make a, <clears throat> a circle, which we call a spirit catcher large enough to put the objects in. You know, the stones, twigs, leaves, you know, they work well for this, but follow your, your own feeling, your own intuition. You're placing objects into the circle that represent the issues you're working on. You'll see when it is done working for you, but no longer than three days. When it's just time to disassemble it, take out the burnable ones, items for your fire ceremony, return the rest to nature. Bring the burnable items to the fire. When you're ready, we'll open sacred space and then begin placing some of the collectible items in a circle. The circle mirrors the medicine wheel of healing as well as the circle of life. We'll place the items inside of our circle in a pattern that feels right to us. You know, don't think about it. Just allow your, your inner conscious mind to direct the work of choosing, arranging and rearranging the items. If Mother Nature so chooses, allow her to participate in your creation through wind or through rain. Now, creating a sand painting is a dynamic process reflecting the transformation we are working on to achieve. It's also a meditation, a pathway to your inner wisdom. Now the sand painting is a, is a map to your inner energy. When it feels like it's done, study your creation. Have a look at it. Paying close attention to the emotions and the insights that come to you. You know, you may feel the need to remove or rearrange some of the items. In essence, you're remapping your energy. You know, this represents the transformation and healing that you'll likely feel. And you'll feel better afterwards. Once you're done, I said, dismantle the sand painting, thank each element for the gift and enlightenment it gave you. Some choose to do this at the end of the rituals, others leave it, I said, for one or two, no more than three days. And you, know, you can go back, have a look and look at some remapping. Either way, it's important to close sacred space and leave no trace of it behind. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to work with one of the most important tools for integrating our experiences, which is the mandala, was a you know, kind of despacho. It's the same painting that you know, I said we, we can do out in nature, we're at a beach or somewhere, we can do it anywhere. But today we're going to learn how to do this right here in our home. Now, I actually do this with my clients when they come into the, into the office and I work with them remotely. I ask them to make a sand painting. And that's what we do. So, what I'm going to do is open a sacred space first off. <sighs> Bring our hands together into our prayer pose. We're going to open our world culture. Just going to hold it here. Dropping down into a breath. And next in breath, bring your hands up into this eighth energy field, this eighth chakra, this golden orb of light, and spreading this golden orb all around us. Now you've seen me do before. 
all around there now and bring it up out and over the sand painting and the items that we have. Good. So today we're going to use sand as our salt and we're just going to spread it all around. Good. You know, I suppose you could start to call it a, a salt painting. That is. Spreading it around. That's good. And I'm just going to balance that out a little bit as we go through, just tidying it up. As this is a reflection on us, and a reflection on being neat and tidy with the things that we do. Good, so spread out. I'm going to use it to integrate at a at a symbolic level. Not on the mental level with words, but with at the level of hummingbird, at the mythic with images. So so this this is my sandbox. And what we're going to do is we're going to decorate it. So I've gathered some elements. I've basically here been around my home for a while now and I've gathered some of them here you know for this occasion and I'm going to start to put them into a begin to put them in a design that is important to me first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a spirit catcher which is a circle around my painting so I start to bring this around on the outside Bring it from here. This is my spirit catcher. That's good from there. So if you can catch the spirit of the sand painting, you don't need to think about what you're going to be putting into it. It's like going with a flow and allowing it to flow naturally. You know, if you get stuck and you don't know what to do, you can open a little corner of the spirit catcher for you to catch the spirit of whatever you need to integrate into your life. But this is through symbols. So let's try it out. So, I'm a little stuck, so I'm going to open a bit of a gateway here. I'm going to open a gateway here and here. And just opening that up. This little gateway here. That's good. And then just soften it down to open that. Open the doorway there. So, what I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with a, the treasure box. And this is an important thing for me because what treasure awaits, what treasure awaits us here. So I'm putting this right in the middle. Around it now, I'm going to put my beads, my mala beads. I use these when I'm meditating and doing other work as well. So I'm going to put these around here. And that represents the beads, my path of devotion. A devotion to, to life, for prayer, for meditation. 
Next one I'm going to do is represents a mountain. The mountain I'm going to put up over here. I think it feels right at the moment. Mountains are the sacred, the, the ancient knowledge for me to learn. I had to learn and then to, and to, to, to pass that on. And then we have some seashells bringing the energies of heaven and earth. Putting those two there. That's the feminine, sacred feminine. And these two little little pointing shells, bringing those from there. A stone, a stone of my past, that I honour you, of time past, thank you, thank you, thank you, I honour you. Sweet incense, ah, the sweetness in my life. You here, I think. I have a stone of joy, my quartz, quartz crystal. Ah, I'll put this down. This one here, right at the top. And feathers, feathers, representing the the animal kingdom. I'm going to place this here and across here and a beautiful gold one as well. Over time past as well, the feathers as we're moving on. Seeds, this little pine cone remembering the things, the things and the ideas that are, that are born inside me. And then I have a ring. It's like an aura ring. And this is to do with my health and physiology to, to pay more attention to my health more. And then I have this building. This building. I'm going to move the mountain a little bit. And move the quartz crystal down to here. It feels a bit better. Make room for this building at the top. It's for the perfect property to work and to, and to share from. Most of you, a lot of you know I had a health retreat in New Zealand. And I don't think maybe it's time for another one or the right property to do the, the work that I'm wanting to, and to, to share with people. And then we have my arrow. Keep me heading in the right direction. This was gifted me to me from a, a shaman in, in Canada. Very special meaning there. And the frog my journey, understanding. And I have some Polo Santo. Polo Santo to, for protection. Add that onto here as well. Maybe I'll put the frog on top of the courts for joy in my learning, diving deep into knowledge. And the bell, bringing this in here, the bell for, to wake up, wake up, don't fall asleep, especially at such a precious time in life and to, and to celebrate this time. We can now Close the circle. Bring this in. Close the circle up. And 
as it's closed. Having a look around, it's very busy sand painting. I think I'll move a couple of things a little bit. Oh, there's a feather of nature. I'll move that to the side here, always. Polo Santo. A very busy little sand painting. There. So this is my my sand painting. Yours can be a lot bigger, can spread it out a, a lot more. Just an abstract expression of all the forces that are at play in my life at the moment. A sense of having a, a treasure at the very centre of the mandala with a shell that, that represents the feminine. The seeds are holding the new seeds inside of it. So there's a lot of potential growth here and a, a lot of possibilities, including the, the need to look at my health more carefully. So this is a part of who I am, the force that, the force that doesn't let me rest too much, that we keep on going. A lot going on there, a lot. If you feel you, know, you need to remove an object, you open the gateway, remove it through the gate and then, then close it again. You know, we're in a time of tremendous suffering in this world and you know, that has always happened. You know, we need to, to ring the bell and celebrate and help others to do the same. You know, we have the freedom now to do that. We don't have to prove ourselves. You don't have to prove yourself to anyone anymore. All we have to do is to, to simply wake up. So this is the story of my mandala. I'm really looking forward to finding out what is in the treasure box. I'm a little worried about opening it up prematurely. I know it's there. I really want to work on my devotion and being devoted to life, to living and to my family. It's my longing and, and my desire. So once you're done, you can leave it for after your ceremony and then dismantle it. Leave it one or two days. Move things around if you want to. You can dismantle the sand painting and think each element, each part, the gift and the enlightenment is given you. Some choose to, you know, as I said, to do the straight away, others might leave it for one or two days and continue to, to remap what is happening in your life. Either way, it's important to close sacred space and leave no trace behind. So best wishes for your sand painting. See how it unfolds and what it brings for you.